Peace be with you. In the last few weeks, our second readings on Sundays, it was from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. And I would like to focus on today as my spiritual supplement. It offers us uh, this uh, uh, St. Paul's letter, a clear and practical instructions on how to find joy in our lives. Stop and think for a moment. When was the last time you experienced a true, undisturbed joy? Have you ever experienced it? I share with you a story. A father shares uh, his story about uh, his four-year-old son. Listen carefully. He said he and his son were out walking when they found a small rubber ball. The kind you get from a cheap vending machine. His son asked if he could keep the ball. And the father said yes. And the father says, when I told my son that he could keep the ball, he looked up at me very excited and said, this is the best day ever. Then the father said, and at that moment, I hated everything about being an adult. I know what he meant. Why is it so hard for adults to find joy like that kid? When was the last time you got excited over someone giving you a small rubber ball? Why is it so hard for us to sustain a mindset of complete peace and overflowing good cheer? Catholic spiritual director Frederick von Hugel says that when candidates are considered for sainthood, they are examined for evidence of joy. Because, he says, there is no such thing as a sad saint. Think about that for a moment. There is no such thing as a sad saint. I am sad to say that if evidence of joy is one of the criteria for sainthood, then don't know if some of us would make the cut. And that's why I, appreci I appreciate these clear and practical instructions from St. Paul gave us in the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. Paul doesn't just tell us how to find joy. He commands us to be joyful and then repeats the command in case we were not paying attention. St. Paul writes, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Notice, he tells us what to do. Rejoice. How to do it? In the Lord. And how often to do it? Always. And he says, there are three essential steps to take us from where we are now to a life of rejoicing. The first step is to replace worry with trust in God. St. Paul writes, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Then he tells us how you do that. Let your gray, uh, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Did you hear that? The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Wouldn't that be great? Do not be anxious about anything. But how do you do that? It is difficult. Because our minds were not made to be empty. We experience thousands of thoughts each day. And unless we are a very special person, some of those thoughts are not pleasant ones. How do we go about choosing only positive thoughts? In the last year, the most popular verse, verse in the Bible was exactly St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 6. Don't worry about anything Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Ask yourself this question. If there is a God, and if that God is all-powerful, and if He is the embodiment of love, 
then what in the world do we have to worry about? Worry comes from two uh, sinful beliefs. The first is that God's character and God's purposes cannot be trusted. God's character consists of goodness and love. So when we doubt God's goodness and His love, and then doubt His plans and purposes for us, then we get twisted up in worry and anxiety. It is particularly true in times of disappointment and heartbreak. Worry says such things as, God could not possibly be in this situation. He could not be walking with me through this. He could not be teaching me anything through this. And he could not possibly heal my heart from this. And when we can see God in our circumstances, then we lose hope. Trying not to worry is like trying not to think about green elephants. Instead of trying to force the anxiety away, replace your worry with thoughts focused on God's goodness. The second instruction for walking the path to joy is to develop a gratitude attitude. Notice that uh, the sixth verse again, St. Paul says, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need, not what you want. So tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Could you do that? Thank God every day for everything He has done. Best-selling author and speaker Tony Robbins tells of interviewing the billionaire investor Sir John Templeton. Tony Robbins asked Templeton, what is the secret to wealth? Tony Robinson is a very wealthy man himself, of course. So uh, Sir John Templeton said, Tony, it is what you teach, gratitude, you know. Tony, we have both met people who have a billion dollars and they are miserable. So they are truly poor. And we both know people who seemingly have nothing, yet they are grateful for everything. So they are rich beyond compare. A gratitude attitude is the source of wealth and happiness, says one of the world's richest men. It sees possibilities and opportunities in all circumstances. More importantly, an attitude of gratitude reminds us that God is present with us in all our circumstances. We are children of God and we take God's Spirit with us into every circumstances. If we can see God in every circumstance, good or bad, then we can move forward with hope. And that brings us to the final instruction for walking the path to joy. So first, replace worry with trust in God. Secondly, develop a gratitude attitude, and finally focus your thoughts on that which is noble and praiseworthy. Beginning with verse 8, St. Paul writes some of the most beautiful words in the scriptures. Listen, finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and God of peace will be with you. What about your thoughts? 
are they noble are they pure excellent or praiseworthy have you noticed that as a society we have become increasingly crude in our language in our entertainment in the things we value when you walk with god and trust in god your thoughts will reflect the character of god it doesn't mean that your life will magically change your circumstances your outside world may remain the same but your ability to see god in your circumstances will change your inside world and that's where joy comes from so when we walk with god we are able to take a big picture view of our lives we are able to replace worry with trust in god choose a gratitude attitude and focus our thoughts on those things they are noble pure admirable excellent and praiseworthy and the result is joy may god bless you